Hey yo yo. Yo, check it. This my special attack. A hundred swords, a hundred episodes, and here's to a hundred more. Who got next? Place your change on the cabinet. Air combo university graduates juggle my enemies before tagging in the master's hero. Pros in action, toe tagging champions getting active. The message will always get near you. Return to the dream team. Spider Man and Strider hear you. When the mask is on, I can't promise I clock to keep his glasses on. The handshake was potent. The inner glow shown as a mega optic blast trailing behind the Shinku Adoken. How you gonna dodge both of them? Blast you down to the last atom. Best regards from the Proton Cannon. You couldn't fathom If you were raised on gaming and put a controller up I'm old enough to study the meta before I bless you We understood space in the dash clean Now we need to adjust in one poster right next to the pro athletes Final justice like a primary lotus from out the sky Stars and stripes reminding you racism is still alive Bring a plasma sword to a gunfight Hey Ato, bring a hurricane kick Tatsumaki Sentaku One time for all my otakus who played the console to their eyes closing Probably forgot to study for their finals Welcome to the sword cast, sword cast My wordplay my sword play when blades clash Welcome to the sword cast, sword cast My word play, my sword play when blades clash Welcome to the sword cast, sword cast My word play, my sword play when blades clash Recording Let's go. Boom. Yo, episode 118. Shout out to my brother Chris, man. Last week he was here. Um he was here, man. We well, he wasn't here, but he was on Yeah, he was on the pod. He's on the pod. Um <clears throat> just the we had some good good comic book talk. The, he's a moon knight master. Uh, he was he was happy to do it, and I enjoyed having my guy on here. Yeah, man, um, that was fun. Super good, dog. Super good. I'm totally uh, here for bringing on like experts in the field. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure, man. It was it was it was cool. Um, so I mean, last week, man, we talked about how this week we're gonna have another definitive. Mm-hmm top 10 list which those are becoming my favorite thing it's always fun to see what type of shenanigans you guys do like putting sign i'm never i will never fear live that down when sonic made the the video game list yeah <laughs> fucking what <laughs> uh, no but no. Uh, so we're gonna get into that later uh i'm also finally gonna really talk about vagabond today like i've been wanting to do just kind of putting it off so I could spend some real couple minutes on it, uh, talking about it. Uh, but first things first, man, what are you into <coughs> currently, my friend? Uh, so I'm into a lot of sports, but I, we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, but it's kind of adjacent to sports, but not specifically about the Pistons. <coughs> um, I've been watching this show on Apple TV called Swagger. Have you heard of that? I, th- I don't I think you, you, you will either hate it or love it, but either way, you'll be super interested in it. Um, it's about it. So Kevin Durant produced it, his whole team. And it's about like, oh, an AAU team. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's about it's about like a eighth grade to ninth grade, like 14 to 15 year old AAU team. Um, and like they like they Sorry. got a star talent on their team and like hit their whole journey. And it's got like it's in the backdrop of COVID and the Black Lives Matter movement. It's pretty dope. Um, well, we're. Um I guess where does it take place? Uh, in the DMV area. Okay, that's um, where Durant. Yeah, from. where Durant's from. Yeah, um, it's dope. It's there. You know, there are parts of it that are obviously super fucking corny. Um, that's that's always gonna yeah. happen with stuff. Like with that. like, I mean, it, it's it kind of reminds me of a more serious version, a, a basketball but more serious version of Cobra Kai, and that like uh, the drama is really really like cheesy at yeah. times. Now, some of it is super serious. Like, there's a really serious plot point with the the female lead in the show. Um, but <clears throat> the reason why I like it, the kid who's the main character is a pretty good actor, but he can really fucking hoop, like, for real. Like, like legit, like... Oh, really? Th- so, the so 
I don't you, I don't think you watch Bel Air, but like these shows that have like sports in the background. <laughs> no, no, right? No, it was good. It was actually pretty good. Um, but these shows that have the sports in the background, they do a, they usually do a really shitty job of, of having like having actual, the actual sports. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's like imagine a martial arts <laughs> flick where you have an obvious stunt double, but like way worse. And even the stunt doubles are like, okay, we're gonna make sure everybody gets in position and shoot the jump shot right now. Like everything is super like nah, bro, like. They do, and you know, this is what you get for having Kevin Durant being um, involved in it. But yeah. the basketball is really good. That's it's like a, that's how it should be, man. Su- it surprised me. I was like, "Yo, wow!" Yeah, like, like that. That some, league. Go get some guys that can actually yeah. hoop and just literally just have them hoop and just shoot it, bro. There was so there was a scene <laughs> at the end of the first uh, uh, first season or first episode where the main character, like O'Shea Jackson Jr., Ice Cube's son, is in it. He's the coach of the team. There's a scene where they're like kind of getting to know each other and they're shooting free throws. And the main Ice Cube's son, yeah, is how old is he? He's like our age. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's a good actor. He's pretty. He's he's got talent. I don't know how good an actor he is yet, <laughs> <clears throat> but he's got upside. I, I liked him. I mean, he was great, obviously. In in WWE. upside is the sportiest word ever. That's one you of my favorite words of all you time. You can't bro. possibly be talking about anything other than sports when uh, you say bro, upside. Bro, he got acting upside. <laughs> These avocados <laughs> got some real upside, man. They might be good in a couple of days. Yeah. But no, there's a scene at the end where they're like, it's a one shot. Like the camera is rotating, it's, a, it's not cut. And the lead character makes like 20 straight, straight free throws. That's like, fire. Which is, I mean, look, bro, I'm a great shooter, but that's not, I mean, I can do it, but it's something that's like not easy right yeah. like i mean I, it's so easy to miss a free throw in practice cause right you just don't care enough. Cause, right or like oh fucking there's a butterfly and you just right <laughs> but like to make 20 straight free throws on camera is like That's you, impressive. you gotta be a ball player to do that yeah shit. and he'd be dunking and like the you know they 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 shoot it really dope so like the camera it's almost like they put it on a drone and it's like flying around the court while they're playing That's um and really it's dope. them it's those kids that are playing and they they can all hoop and it's that part is super impressive. So shout out to Swagger. I'm almost done with the first season. Hopefully it gets renewed. That's Apple dope. TV. That's interesting, man. I'm gonna have to check that out. That actually, that sounds sounds like something I would. I love. Uh, I do like basketball uh, shows and movies. So also from a coaching perspective, they get all the way into all the nonsense. Oh, that happens. all the cancerous, the, the uh, crazy AAU. parents, yeah. the crazy like money grubbing AAU people, like the big uh, big wigs that try to steal kids from other teams. Dude, so they get my, really into all of that shit. That's man. That's and it's. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check this out because that that's all the stuff that I can't <coughs> stand about um, the AAU coaching game is this and i'm lucky right i have i have really good parents like i don't have any uh crazy parents on my team um but just yeah. like for example some of these tournaments man like they're crazy yeah because they're like i wanted to put the boys we played on um we played on saturday uh this past saturday i wanted to put them in a in a, another tournament that was uh had some teams that I'm familiar with, you know, that I wanted them to to play against. And bro, the tournament was three days long. Like and and it's what? just a money grab. You know what I'm saying? Like it's no it's no point. Like every it should just be one day. You know what I mean? If yeah. it's a local tournament and it's smug was three days long. And it's like <coughs> they do stuff lot. like that and then they they charge admission every time you come to a game and it's like <laughs> what is this the next like all right bro <laughs> You know what I mean? So yeah. But Good old AU. Speaking of AU, we played on Saturday. I told you, straight up played against a future NBA player, no doubt. This team, ridiculous. Um, man, this was the best sixth grader I've ever seen in person. You all know his name? I don't know his name. I, um, I'm sure he's ranked. ranked. Uh, <laughs> but this guy was very, 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 very good. Uh, and if he's not ranked, then he, he needs to go. He needs to go play somewhere so somebody can see him. Yeah, this kid was unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, man, I'm into sports too. But we're gonna talk about that. But uh, yeah, man, uh, I've been again. I've been kind of into these old black and white movies, man. Like uh, I was talking to Josh. Uh, I was literally just talking to Josh last night about. Uh, I 
kind of ran through the the older samurai flicks. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, Yojimbo and Sanjiro and uh, Seven Samurai and uh, those movies, uh, the Kurosawa joints. And I started watching the Zatoichi <coughs> joints. Man. Fire. So yeah. good. These are the Zatuichi is the blind, blind, yeah. blind swordsman. He's the masseur that carries the, the the cane, but it's a sword in it. Yeah, and it's like I sent you that uh, clip from it. It's just like this movie came out in the '60s, man, and like the the swordsmanship is like incredible. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, legit. It's really amazing. Super good movie. I am. It's so many of them though. It's like there's like 20 of them or something like that. I've watched the first four. I think the second one's probably my favorite. Um, but the Zatoichi movies, man, they're so good. He's such a sweet character, man. He's a psycho. He's a blind uh, sword master. And um, again, like these old black and white movies, man, they're they're so they're just they just keep my attention. It's weird. They're I I like them a lot. Like the the music's always really good. Mm-hmm. The acting is really good. The but like I said, the thing that I'm most impressed with is like the swordsmanship in these movies. Like it's better than stuff that you will watch now. It's crazy. Yeah. Um. And it's like not all. Like my biggest pet peeve with Hollywood is the editing, man. Like I don't understand. Cuts. I still don't understand why that is something that's preferred. I don't. I don't, I don't know. get it. I don't understand why they. Why. Why not just wide shot of the of the fight itself <laughs> you know what i mean like when you watch these older movies that's it's just legit swordsmanship it's quick it's realistic um but it's like you watch a movie now and you get like a headache because it just <laughs> it's just so much cuts so much um i remember i watched that movie 47 ronin like mm-hmm. not the there's an original there's an old one mm-hmm. um that came out in like the 60s but i'm talking about uh the one with keanu, keanu reeves, reeves yeah I watched that like years ago and that's all I was like there's this one fight man and it's just oh, it's just um, 50 million cuts like iron fist remember oh actually I don't know what that is what is that iron fist uh, it wasn't anything was it no, no the man with the iron mask is that what you're talking about I was, I was yeah something I don't know yeah. not Netflix iron fist though I'm not talking about that no <laughs> no <laughs> that's not a real thing <laughs> That is not a real That's not a thing that exists. No, it does not. It's right up there with the live action Avatar movie. What? I don't know what that is either. Um, yep. I have no idea. See? Uh, but yeah, so I've been watching these old black and white swords movie, swordsman movies. Incredible. But let's go, man. It's time for a little sports check in. Um, we got a lot going on, man. I got my guys, your second favorite team. Yep. Doing great. In the conference finals but before we talk about that i know you probably got some stuff you want to get off your chest a lot of important offseason things going on with the pistons yeah what's what's on your plate man as far as sports go <clears throat> all right look let me just start with this it's too bad uh we did not stay in the top three that sucks but how on a scale of one to ten the the day of the lottery what was your anxiety level? Uh bro, like sick. I was like, <laughs> sick. <laughs> the scale of puke, bro. Like it was all man, it was sucked. It was not a good day. The whole week was trash. Oh my goodness, puke. Yeah. Uh I was super anxious. And it I mean, it's look, bro, is it the worst case scenario? No. But it's definitely not good. Like I don't mm-hmm. I don't like this turnout. But I have since felt much better about it. It's almost a certainty that we're not going to get one of the quote unquote big three. Um, I like the big three a lot, um, but the good news is there are two guys in this draft that I think like Paulo is probably the guy that I wanted the most. He looks like a sure thing. Yeah, he's he's the. Uh, if I had to pick a favorite, it was him yeah. for sure. I mean, I love for the Pistons. He, for he the was Pistons, my, right? He was my favorite. I love Chet's upside. I I can also see how he might not work. He, you know, his his frame is is a little scary. Um, I I am a lot less high on Jabari Smith than everybody else. I mean, he can really shoot, like really really shoot. He's a great defender. But look, man, this is the NBA, bro. You go, you can't be a number two or three or one overall pick, and you can't create your own shot. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's this ain't nineteen ninety nine no more, bro. Like, you can't. You got to be the guy who can be a number one option on a good team. And I just right. didn't see that for for Jabari. Yeah, I I think 
You know, that that's kind of crazy that you say that because I do want to say that, like, in the current climate of the NBA, I feel like it's, I feel like it's almost, I feel like if you're going to be the, if, if a team is going to invest a number one pick in you, I feel like you have to be, you have to be like uh, some type of creator. Like you have to be able to create offense for yourself if you're yeah. going to be the first pick. And the only way that I don't see that happening is if you're just like a all world potential, like seven foot. Yeah, jump out of the gym type of athlete or something, but but even those guys, but even those guys now that one. that 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 whole thing is it's like getting dead. phased out. I mean, like, look at bro, Andre Drummond, bro. bro. Look at James Wiseman. Right. I mean, and I mean, he hasn't played, but like, do you know how much it just pains me that the Warriors just that was their pick? Like, you know what yeah. I mean? And I mean, I'm. St- it doesn't bother me that bad because that was a very top heavy draft. That you know what I mean? That. He was third really, or second. He was second. Yeah. So they could have got they, LaMelo. Like, I would have loved for them to get LaMelo. He fits their – I don't know if he fits the culture of that team, but he definitely fits the, the play style. And, yeah. Um, but I was – but it don't bother me because we got Jordan Poole, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, but – Jordan Poole is better for them than I think yeah. LaMelo would have been. Because LaMelo, in order for him to really fly, he needs to have the ball in his hands more than he would have got it. Yeah. At Golden State. And he just didn't fit the timeline for that team. But – Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, you know, it's 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 weird now the way that Yeah. It's it's a premium, bro. Like you have to be able to create your own offense. That's the thing that until K Cunningham, that was the reason why the Pistons were so irrelevant. They didn't have anybody that could do that. No how you gonna how you gonna have nobody that can do that for ten straight years? Are you and, kidding me? But it's it's so important. Like I was just talking about like my team, my kids. Yeah, right, you know right, what I'm right. saying? I got one kid that can really truly Break down the person in front of him and go get a bucket when we, you know what I'm saying, when it matters and when we need it. I got one kid that can do that. Yeah. So it's like, it's tough, man, if you don't have that on your team. So with that said, even though we fell out of the top four, um, I still think we got a chance at one of or two of the best three or four players in this draft, and that's mm-hmm. Shaden Sharp and Jaden Ivey. Um, <laughs> and and Shade and Sharp is kind of a newer because I remember at first I don't I don't know if you were high on him or not. If you could I just have been didn't know a, I didn't okay, yeah, I didn't yeah. know he was going to be in it. I was high on I've always been high on him, but I wasn't sure that he was going to declare. That was what I was. Yeah, and he's kind of again. This is a and and I'm not at all. I am not at all saying that this is a James Wiseman thing because it's not. I mean, strictly the the in the way that he just didn't play, so you just don't know. You know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so so as a matter, so matter of fact, here's here's what I'm gonna do. Instead of saying it, I actually already wrote this out <laughs> in, in hot take form. Oh my goodness! He so, was ready. Uh, let's go ahead and see if I can find it real quick. Um, I put this in the. All right, so here we go. This is a hero hot take. Shout out to Stu Gods. Um, yo. Pistons fans, hot take time. Yes, sir. <laughs> Feeling way better about the NBA draft. Want to know why? Here's why. If there's one thing we can count on more than lottery balls or upside panning out, it's that the Sacramento Kings <laughs> will poop themselves while on the draft clock. Shade and Sharp, Jaden Ivey. Get your buffs ready. You're coming to Detroit. <laughs> By the way, Troy Reaver, if you draft Keegan Murray with the fifth pick, you can go to hell. <laughs> Speaking of hell, say hello to Mario when you get there. <laughs> and those are the hero hot takes for now. Shout out to Stu Gatz. Dan Lebertar show. Don't sue me. That's how I feel about that shit, bro. Oh my god! You cannot fucking. I mean, I think he's gonna be a perfectly fine player, but with, if you pass on fucking Jaden Ivy for him, I'm gonna shit my pants, dog. Bro, Are you that- kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> you out of your mind? <laughs> right, dog. That, that was that was extremely funny. <laughs> that was uh, and and if we can trade for the seventh overall pick with uh with Portland, you do that shit in a heartbeat. 
Yes. Oh, absolutely, man. Go absolutely. get me. Go and get me. Shaded sharp. You could, and then you could even you could package it and move up too. Or oh, you could just okay. trade. Or you could just trade the seven to somebody that's trying to move down. Sure. So here's here's the question. I've been asking this around my basketball sphere. It's a harder question than I thought, bro. Okay. If you have. If the Sacramento Kings, uh, them drafting Shaden Sharp is actually a good pick for them. Uh, that's not, I wouldn't say that that's a pooping of the pants. but yeah, A pooping of the pants for them would be Jaden Ivey because he just does oh my not God. fit. Yes. They're, they 100%. already got rid of the uh, – they drafted Davion Mitchell – and, and then they got rid of, they got rid of Halliburton to develop him. So it's like right. if they, if they were, bro, if they, oh my God, <laughs> if they do that, but shit, that bro. would be the thing, though. Yes. That would be the Kings. That's the. <laughs> this is the way. That would be the <laughs> pooping be the, their pants, bro. That would be the Kings' way. So with that in mind, um, if say they draft Shaden Sharp, Ivy's on the board at five. You make the trade for, uh, you trade Grant to Portland for seven. Do you do you package that trade? I mean, they, they'd have to do it ahead of time because they, yeah. they would already pick. But do you package five and seven to get up to three and draft Paulo, or do you keep five and seven and get Ivy and Murray? I thought I was gonna say Paulo immediately, but I kind of don't know, bro. Like if you can get both of them because I, I know I've been talking a lot of shit about Murray. I don't think he's no, gonna be but, weak. But, but the thing, this okay, this is what I I, I watched a lot of his stuff. After we talked about him, and I, I think that this is. I think Pistons Detroit would be a good place for him. I think he can be. I think he's gonna be a good player. He's just he just can't be the he can't be your number one yeah. option. No, he comes not even to, your number two. He option. comes to Detroit. He's the third. He's the third option, maybe fourth. Right. And I think he could. Yeah, I think he could thrive in a situation like that. But bro, if Paolo is on the clock after the first two picks, and you can move up to three and get him, you, you might do it. That's tough. Yeah, I, I might. Know. I'm gun to my head. I might do it too. But but if I can, if I if I'm sure that but if you can, if I can get bro, Ivy but if you and get, Murray, but if you can just get Ivy and just one of these other sure, guys, just any of those, I feel like, like you have Durin or somebody. I like feel that. like you have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you're getting two. You're getting two players, and then, in my personal opinion, I think. Ivy, he might not be what teams need, but I think he's like a top three sure. prospect. I think. Look, I think Jaden. Okay, so I think Paulo Banchero has a has a high floor. It's similar to the high floor of Murray. I honestly, I think Keegan Murray is like a poor man's Paulo. Mm-hmm. Very similar. They they play different, but they have a similar like value, mm-hmm. right? I think their their floors are about the same. I think Paulo's ceiling is way higher than Keegan Murray's, obviously. But I think Jaden Ivy, even though his floor might be lower than both of them, I think his ceiling is just as high as Paolo's. Yeah, no, I agree. I think, I mean, he's he is the exact type of guard that's just dominating the league right, right. now. Right. I mean, we saw you what kind mean? of damage Jade or um, Ja Moran has done. Is he exactly the same player as him? Right. No. But like fresh, but when Ja was coming out of college, they were ve- almost identical. Right. right? And it's I, weird because they look they look alike too. Dude, they look alike. It's yeah. And Ivy weird. is low key bigger and stronger than Ja. Yeah. He he's, might not be quite as as electric, but like he's close. Yeah. And he's also bigger and stronger, and is already like a better shooter than Ja was when he was coming out. And they like again, like I said, they they look alike. They yeah. play alike. It's, play super similar. I saw somebody. There was like a video. Uh, I've seen that when it came out on the internet and it was like both of their moves together yeah, together yeah. and it was weird. <laughs> so I say all that to say that I feel better about number five well, just multiverse because multiverse John Moran. Right. <laughs> Very <laughs> I feel better about about it because one, there's still there's six really good players in this draft, in my opinion. So we're gonna get one of them. Even if it's Keegan Murray, I would be disappointed. But he's he's at minimum gonna be a good player. Like he's mm-hmm. not gonna be a star, I don't think, but he'll be he'll be solid. It's, that's fine. At least you won't miss. At least he won't be a bust. But the real reason why I feel good, and somebody just put this on on my Facebook post, the good news at five is that the Pistons get to pick the dude, the dude the Kings immediately passed up. To <laughs> there's, there's pretty much a lock that that person will be a future Hall of Famer, no matter who they are. <laughs> True. Uh, we love Sacramento Kings slander. All right. All right. That's my Pistons update. Fire. Boom. Uh, but yeah, Pistons. But again, man, the Warriors just absolutely crushing it in the Western Conference Finals right now. Um, look, man, you basketball hipsters, 
<laughs> you basketball. Look, let me just say this. First of all, you know, I am extremely happy with the way the Warriors have been playing. Steph, greatest shooter of all time, best point guard of all time. Stop. Stop it. Uh, next, uh, it's just the ball movement, man. It's it's. I love it. I love it so much. They play uh, the most exciting brand of basketball, in my opinion. I love the way they move the ball. They get up and down. They got shooters everywhere. Draymond Green is just my all-time favorite role player. It's just an incredible teammate, defender, amazing passer, playmaker, heart and soul of that team. Um, but, man, I, we talked about this uh, off air. A lot of people were shocked at, at Kevin Looney, uh, Kevon, Kevon Looney, Kevon Looney, just like his production. You know what I mean? And I yeah. think that it's just I don't, people forget, man, like this guy was one of the best high school players when he was in high school. He was like a 6'9 point guard. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And what happened was he got all these injuries. Um, he had like a crazy hip injury or something. He had to get surgery on like both of his hips. Um, and it really messed him up in college. So he fell in the draft and everything. But what I really want to talk about is two things. <laughs> First of all, we're going to talk about my guy, Andrew Wiggins. Andrew Wiggins, man, former number one overall pick. The basketball hipsters absolutely hated this guy so much for no reason. Bro, he wasn't ever bad. You guys love stats. Go look up his average career 20, stats. His whole career. Dude That's an average problem. 20. Pa- <laughs> I don't. I, the thing was never trash. I do not never understand. Bad. He was never trash. Average 20 a game his entire career. You guys just want every number one pick to be LeBron or Michael Jordan. Bro, we were just talking about this off air, bro. Kate Cunningham had the 10th best rookie year of all time. And all time. It was a bust. He didn't even win rookie of the year. He he had, w- it was only t- nine other best. people <laughs> playing played sweeter than him for his, his rookie year. And Ever. Had, in the whole in the history of the, NBA, of the league, nigga did not was was considered to be a bust. Get the fuck out of here! I mean, eventually he know. proved everybody wrong, but they were talking about bust in the beginning of the season. Like, it was a beast. What are we talking about what here? You guys, shut mean. up! It's so so weird. Um, I don't know, man. Whatever. But I will say this: I think that um, I think that Andrew Wiggins has really been like on the receiving end of some just weird, weird, I guess I'll call them like basketball hipster expectations, man. Like this guy has never been, he's never been bad. No. Um, he was never trash. Like we said, and he is showing now that he's one, he's a team player, super team player Two, He is, he is willing to go out and, really put 100% on both ends, man. Like, this guy is gu- guarding Luka full court every game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. Put him on a poster last night. Yep. <clears throat> man, play Gross. that dunk. <laughs> Hold on, let me see if I can find that shit right quick. This this Andrew Wiggins dunk on Luka, man. My It's easily my second favorite dunk ever. My first favorite, as a Warriors fan, my first favorite dunk is Baron Davis on Andre Karolinko 2006 playoffs. When that dunk happened, I was in my I was in the basement at my mom's house. I was young, young young boy and Baron Davis dunks on Andre Karolinko. This is a West Western Conference playoff game. Uh-oh, hold on. <laughs> Andrew Wiggins wins. Fatality. Wow. Yeah, nah. Yeah. He dunked. Again. You see Luca? Shit. Wow. Luca was like, wow. Yeah, nah, he, he dunked on he me. Dunked. He, he dunked Luca in the. <laughs> <laughs> in the river sticks. Yeah. <laughs> Sent that nigga to the doo wop. Fucking. Conchu and Moon Knight. Oh, my. He dipped him. Hey! Dunked him in the. He baptized him in the Lazarus pit. <laughs> That is a poster. Um, that should be an end one, if anything. Let's go. Um, but this dunk, man, like, literally it's right up there with the Baron Davis dunk on Karolinko. That's crazy. Luka that was nasty, bro. He tried to flop. Get out of here, Luca. He did. He tried to flop. Um, which brings me to my next point. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, like I said, uh, dunk, crazy. Uh, 
Sec, definitely second favorite dunk, Warriors dunk, Brand Davis on Karolinko. I had the same reaction when I was a kid. Like I said, I was got super loud, woke my mom up. This time happened at my house, got super loud, woke everybody in my house up. It was awesome. But Luca, man, every I mean, I, I know he's a good player. I just I hate the way he plays, man. Like this dude dribbles, this dude comes down. That's why I like Yes, he's getting his points. He's dropping 35, 40. But I just respect Wiggins so much for dealing with <clears throat> all this because it's so stressful, bro. Like, this dude dribbles the ball for the entire possession, dribbles out the entire shot clock, gets 25 ball screens in the uh, during the course of that possession. And basically, this dude Wiggins has to defend this guy for, you're defending him for the whole possession because he, he dribbles the ball for 20 seconds and he's getting a ball screen, you know, 10, 10 times. And yeah. um, the Warriors, the way they've been defending has been great too. But what I was going to say is everybody loves this guy. If that was – can you imagine what people would say if that was some other player playing like that? Yes. Because it's not it's not good basketball, first of all. It's not good basketball. And – when I was in college, I'd said this in the Discord. We used to call players like that ball stoppers. Like mm-hmm. when they get the ball, the offense stops and it's and it's there's no movement. And we would just let them go all go ahead, go off. You know, if you're gonna hit contested shots, which that's what Luca does. He hits tough shots. And if they're gonna make them, that's fine, but your teammates aren't involved, so we're just gonna win anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's kinda that's kinda how this dude plays, man, right now. And I just and it just it annoys me because if it was someone else Maybe a black player. Sorry. Right. <laughs> uh, people would. They, that's just not winning basketball. You can't. You already know, man. So here's here's my analysis. You know, I'm actually a fan of Luca. I think he. Could, I think he's. I think he's here to stay. Like I think he's gonna go down being an all time great. Uh, here is my problem. Um, the way he plays is uh, it is super annoying. Period. Can't stand it. Super annoying. The problem, and this actually is, this would actually help him if this wasn't the case. Like, what are his options? Pass it to fucking Reggie Oh, Bullock? no, and, and I was, you know what I no, mean? but I was, I was, so I was talking to somebody about this on the internet, and I did say that, like, I get it. Like, I understand. I don't think he trusts his supporting cast. No, guys. he do, He clearly doesn't. Yeah. That's the problem. That's the problem, right? I think, I think Luca will be better if he, <laughs> he just needs one other guy that can do anything. <laughs> just like what, Jalen Brunson? Anything. <laughs> right. Like, oh, my, the six, I mean, Jalen Brunson can hoop, but bro, he's six foot one. Like He's cold. He's sweet though. Ah. Bro, Jalen Brunson was good. His high school tape was bananas. I, I'm not a Jalen Brunson guy. Like, can, he can hoop, obviously, but yeah. get him the fuck off the Pistons. <laughs> I would fucking puke if they paid if they overpaid him bro i don't care how good you are if you're a six foot one shooting guard and you don't average 30 get out of here if you're not Allen iverson get out of here what are you gonna do he gonna guard nobody nobody and he's not like he's not like oh enough of that guy to justify paying him too much money oh, like dude. his his perfect role jalen brunson's perfect role would be the six man on like a already good ass team mm-hmm. where you need another oh get the spark plug off the bench average eighteen perfect right. uh, 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 a a um, what's my um best maybe second first or second best six man of all time uh Lou Williams like in a Lou Williams mm-hmm. role perfect for him oh man prime Lou Williams is a bucket a professional uh, scorer professional bro. bucket getter <clears throat> but to be this guy his height and his defensive liability and i'm gonna pay him a max contract and you don't average 30 get out of my face i'm not doing it <laughs> um but anyways like and that just says plenty if that's his next best player like sure i'm gonna shoot 40 shots so it, i'm getting beside the point the point about luca that frustrates me and and i'm a guy who thinks he's here to stay um he is super inefficient, bro. Or he's mm-hmm. he's actually much better than he was in his early in his career. Um, but he is a he was a straight up bad three point shooter, bro. No, f- and he yeah. would just chuck. He would take these step backs. Like somebody tried. So I I even saw this. I was listening to a podcast, to, uh, some ringer hipster podcast, <laughs> where they they swear about Luca, and they were like, yeah, like why wouldn't why couldn't Luca be as good as LeBron? 
one day. And I'm like, and so the the obvious answer was like, because LeBron is a physical, is a dinosaur, like it's like a literal like tyrannosaurus He's an Rex. anomaly, bro. Right, He's, like nobody will ever be that physical no. specimen. Like maybe never ever. Yeah, He's um, definitely an anomaly. And then they were like, oh, because he's a much better shooter than LeBron. And and then some and somebody <laughs> with sense actually came in. Somebody was like, with sense. Was like actually, like no, nah, actually, <laughs> LeBron is is a career better. Th- he can flat out shoot better than Luca. Right, like, and on similar attempts. Well, Luca Luca shoots a, a low percentage from three, man. Right, Again, this and so. So here, here was here was this is how you know these hipsters average. being there being there in their bag to try to figure out how to make him Jesus. <laughs> the the retort to that was in well, their bag. This is the retort was well like can't it's well kind of like Luca can kind of get to his he can get to his step back like kind of way better. It's gonna make him better like because he can get to his <laughs> shot more easily. Like who fucking cares if you can get to it? Bro, first of all, anybody who, can do a step back. Also, like let's also again like this dude, bro. He makes some contested ridiculous shots shots like yeah. they're not good shots that right. he made right. shooting he just makes them i mean it's a it is a it's a it's a compliment to luca that he can make those it shots it is a compliment to him but again but, like let's let's not sit here and be like oh well, he can get no, bro, like, he, he can get to a shot because he's six right. whatever he's six and he's, seven and he's shooting like they're contested though like, right it's not and an also shot. like it's a compliment that he can make those shots but like basketball wise like those are horrible shots that he's just so good that he can make mm-hmm. but from from the team perspective that ain't gonna win bro it's 100%. not like it hasn't won so far he's been he's been stellar bro and it's only four years in the league he's already averaging like 26 8 and 8 he's gonna be a hall of famer but like he hasn't won shit because he had no teammates <laughs> ever, and he keeps developing habits where like, all right, I guess my only option is to, like you said, go off twenty five ball screens and Bro. shoot a step back thirty footer, and maybe I'll make it thirty five percent of the time. And when I do, everybody will call me the goat. But if I don't, <laughs> then they'll blame it on Jalen Brunson, <laughs> not me. So I'm living a good life. Oh my gosh, Luca is going to he he will. It's kind of almost like. James Harden, like a good version of James Harden when he had, when uh, this is hard to explain because he's been trash, but like <laughs> when, when James Harden doesn't have to do the stuff that he was doing in Houston where he was doing Luka, but he was like Luka triple. No, he right? was. Fact. But like he wasn't winning shit because like you can't do that for a whole season and right. like expect to win. But when when he's able to like, maybe, maybe I'm going to average like 25, 7 and 7 instead, but I got another guy who can average 24 that I don't have to do all this shit on my own. Like his numbers won't be as good, but I bet you he wins more right? like that. So, so yeah, the whole Luca thing is, is, uh, you know, I, I, I like Luca. I, I want to be more of a fan because I'd like, I like his game, but like the basketball hipsters make me really afraid of doing that because I can't stand it. Bruh. Don't do that. Don't do that to spite these black players that are sweet. Like I think LaMelo ball is going to be better than Luca. Flat yeah, out, me too. Like, I and think LaMelo Ball already is doing that stuff and can, like, defer more, right? And, like, can do – hit those tough shots and is and is a better passer than Luka by far, in my opinion, and, and is a better defender, right, a better rebounder or as good a rebounder. So let's not pretend – I know we're horny for a right, white superstar, but let's not pretend that Cade is not coming. Let's not pretend – Cade busts his ass when they played. You know what I'm saying? Let's yeah. not put. Let's not pretend that K's not coming. Let's not pretend that Luca's or excuse me that that um, um, Lamelo is is right there, right? Like, so yeah, I'm with you, bro. Y'all got to chill out with some of this Lucas shit. Um, he's I, good. He's really good. He's, he's gonna be a Hall of Famer. Exactly, it's all good, man. Like, like he's a great player. Not so fast. He's you know gonna I mean? be very good. But like you said, man, y'all got to pump the brakes a little bit because it's a lot. It's a lot to it, man. And and he just. He just – I don't like the way that he plays, and I just think that if it was somebody else playing like that, yeah. with oh. his level of, like, mediocre efficiency – You know who's way more efficient it. than him and gets a bad rap? Colin Sexton. They uh, think Colin Sexton is a bum. Crazy, man. How? <laughs> How do you think that? Do you want me to show you what his – this nigga's career average is 20 points per game on 38% from three and 46% from the floor. That's flat out good. That's really that's good. good. That's you like better I mean? than Kobe Bryant's career like efficiency. Like, come Crazy, on, man. what are we talking about here? Yeah, Anyways. I don't know, man. Uh, but hey, man, basketball hipsters taking over for the nine nine. Two thousand. But yeah, man. Uh, real quick, 
Uh, that was fantastic. But I got some hot takes for you, man. Uh. It's time for – you already kind of did some, but it's time for – Heroes hot takes. <laughs> Still struggling with my voice, man. I was out here yelling at refs again on Saturday. Right. Um, all right, man. You ready? All right. Let's you already go. gave yours on the NBA draft. I actually had that on here, which is crazy. <laughs> uh, let's go. Star Wars Disney Plus shows. Ah, Star Wars Disney Plus. <laughs> what are we going to do? Another series about clones? <laughs> We're going to do some more series about fucking... Oh, no. We're just going to make a girl clone and make it different somehow. Are we going to keep talking about the Skywalkers and not have any black Jedi or any brown Jedi? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Ought to be ashamed of yourself. As long as we keep talking about these same people in this same timeline, I'm not excited. Go get me a fucking dark side... A dark force using black woman as the main character. Then I'm all in. Boom. Fake diversity for the win. Um. <laughs> right. <laughs> NBA Conference Finals announced teams. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, man. Reggie Miller, you're all right with me. The rest of those guys, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> who, would you, who would you rather see? Uh, Why is Doris Burke not doing the Oh, yeah. Finals? I don't know, man. Doris Burke, bro, the auntie. Everybody's basketball auntie. Bro, like she needs to be in here. She needs to be in there. You know who else I would like to see in there, honestly, who I think bro, JJ Reddick. I like Fantastic, his bro. I like his basketball mind. I like his takes. Yes. I think he's good, man. I think he would be good. Uh, I think he would be really good on an announced team. Agreed. Um yeah, I'm a fan. Uh but all right, boom, let's move on. Uh <laughs> Stranger Things season. Did you get that thing I sent you? Uh, what, what bro, was it? they released the the times for some. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Oh my yeah. god, bro, bring it on, dog! <laughs> Stranger Things season four, <laughs> two and a half hour season finale. <laughs> Fuck it, we may as well go to the movie theater. I'm here for it. <laughs> Yo, I would love to see them actually release it in the movie bro, theaters. Bro, I would, I would go. Me too. Bro, let's go. I've that never would be seen fantastic. anything like this. This the last like four episodes is like it's like three movies. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally yeah, like three, bro, movies. three whole movies. <laughs> like dog. three movies. It's crazy. Um uh, Robert Pattinson's Batman. It, dog, why the fuck that keep happening? <laughs> Robert Pattinson. You knew him from Twilight. Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think that that emo character that he played in Twilight would come in handy. <laughs> Boy, were you wrong. Emo Batman <laughs> with Batliner and the fucking gun in his chest. Bat Favorite Batman, perhaps. Oh, Batliner. Oh, shout out to Josh with the Batliner. Bang. Um, <laughs> and last but not least, give me a hot take on Jaden Ivey. <laughs> oh, Jaden Ivey, 6'4 guard out of Purdue with the explosiveness of John Morant and the hair of John Morant <laughs> <laughs> in the same game as John Morant. You mean to tell me that the Pistons might be able to get John Morant? <laughs> Sign me up for John Morant on the Pistons. Except his name is Jaden Ivey. Do it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. This is my favorite. It's my new favorite thing on the podcast. <laughs> I learned oh. at the, the foot of the master, bro. Stu Gotts, my man. It was hilarious. All right, man. It's time for me to do something that I've wanted to do on ah, the yes. show for a long time. That is really, really get to talk about Vagabond, my favorite manga of all time. Just a life-changing read for me. I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm also going to not really get into too much detail to spoil it for people that i know are listening that have been talking to me about gonna start reading it but what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna talk about my three favorite lessons from the manga because uh, it's very philosophical life mm. story mm -hmm. i'm gonna talk about my three favorite arcs my three favorite characters and then i'm just gonna give you my three favorite quotes and that's it um but i mean again amazing story Super philosophical story. Um, I'll start with the characters, man. Uh, you guys already know. My favorite character from the story is the Sasaki Kojiro character. Um, this is a character who really 
taps into that uh i talked about uh really just represents the Tao, right like the chinese um chinese philosophy uh the whole uh be water thing like this mm. that's what he represents in this story he's he's uh he's a swordsman but he's deaf and mute um such an interesting twist there yeah very um he's he's <coughs> deaf and mute can't talk um and he just represents this free this free nature he's he's got he's got no outside noise because he can't hear everything he does wow. is nat- everything he does is natural that's he, fire yeah he really represents um like just being formless you know and um and he's su- and he's very kind he's super kind and uh he just represents like when i said uh, i'm a fan of the Tao, right in the uh Tao De jing books uh, he just he really represents that feminine nature and they always talk about how in in, in chinese philosophy how um, the feminine nature is actually the dominant one, right? Like they always compare water mm-hmm. to the feminine nature and like the, the masculine is, is the rock, right? But a rock can't do anything to water. But if, if a rock is, is up against, you know, it is getting crashed into by a wave over time, the wave will, will actually wear, wear the rock down, you know, and the rock mm-hmm. can't do anything to the water. Um, and he just, you know, he's, again, he's, he's pure. He just has this like childlike innocence, but, but it can also lead to brutality sometimes mm-hmm. because he's he's kind of disconnected from you know what I mean he's very discon- detached from uh, the earth as you, as as you could say um, and and um, but he's just a really dope character man his 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 only ways of connecting with people is uh, either sex with women or dueling right and mm-hmm. and it's just it's really interesting to see the difference between him and Musashi because you have uh, this character. <coughs> You have Musashi, right, and they really are so different from each other. But it's almost like they—it's almost like they—they they each have what the other one would probably is is, lo- is looking for, right? Like mm-hmm. Musashi is this character who is—he's uh, just—he's my second favorite character, right? But he's a master of his thoughts. He's—he's he's so smart, and he—he's um, a master of his thoughts, and he's just really. Uh, master of learning from his losses and learning from his mistakes and um he's my second favorite character man and, and you have musashi who he's such got such a uh, a mind on him right and and one thing i really got from this story is is it about um mastering your thoughts or is it about emptying your thoughts you know what i mean and, and these two characters really represent that um again Musa, like I, I talked about how Kojiro is the water and Musashi is definitely like the mountain you know what I mean and he and he's he kind of goes through this too like is it about getting to the top of the mountain or is it about becoming the mountain and, and being the mountain yourself you know and, and um he is such a dope character I, I honestly think that Musashi is probably the best developed character that I've in this story that I've like ever seen more more so than Kojiro yeah, because Kojiro's, I would say his his character is fire, but the development part of it is kind of limited because he's already wow. he's already what um, what you as a martial artist, right? And and, and you want to be you want to reach that state of like an empty mind, and 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 you want to reach that state of being so fluid and just relying on instincts. He's already that, right? You know what I'm saying? He's been that, so his development is kind of limited in that in that aspect. Whereas Musashi has something that he's actively chasing after, you know, he's got goals and everything. Um, but like I said, it's it's you got you got Kojiro who's who's just all about being natural, and then you got Musashi who's about pursuing knowledge so your brain can control your body. You know what I'm saying? And, and you and that's his thought of it. But Kojiro is just like he don't think about nothing, so it's his body just does it. You know what I mean? Mm. Musashi's under the impression that you got to be like this genius so you can command your body to do what you want it to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, just those are those are my two favorite characters. Uh, then you got, uh, and then you got my third favorite character, who is uh, Josai Kanemaki. He's an old man. He's the one who raised Kojiro. Um, his story is really good too, man. Uh, he's just he's just an old man. He's he's like our living as a hermit on this island. Uh, he was a sword master, but he kind of his life kind of got ruined because he ended up raising a really strong student named Ito Itosai, who in this story he's kind of the musashi before musashi was musashi like he's uh, kind of the top you know top what I'm saying? Dog. yeah and uh josiah <clears throat> trained this guy and he surpassed him and beat him and it kind of ruined josiah's life because now nobody wanted to learn from him because he got surpassed by one of his students you know yeah. what i mean so uh he ends up getting a letter from one of his top students 
uh, and they were at war, so they sent their baby son off to him so he could take care of him so so he wouldn't die, you know, in the war. Mm-hmm. So Kanemaki gets – he gets Kojiro when he's a baby, and he raises him up um, from being a baby. And he's just – he's a really dope character, man. Like, he's very, very relatable. Um, he was really, like, kind of giving up on life until – that till Kojiro got there and he and he started to raise him. Uh, he was a he was a master. He he ends up getting in this kind of crazy situation again. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but he's 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 a really good character, man. And, and his the arc where they explain their relationship was um, was really good. That's my two favorite characters, man. Right. Um, then like again with Kojiro and Musashi, they both have this really dope. They both have kind of a defining like thing that happens to them, like with. With Kojiro, it's uh, – so, you know, he, he ends up uh, – his whole thing is he wants to – he's, like, obsessed with the sword from the time he's a baby. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He carries around this huge katana when he's a baby, and uh, <coughs> Kanemaki, like, doesn't like him to have it because he doesn't really want him to become a swordsman because he knows, like, what it can lead to and all this stuff. Then uh, Kojiro just watches him because Kanemaki practices all the time, and he just mimics his movements and stuff. And then he ends up getting older, and he gets older and older. Then there's a thing that happens where uh, there's this this guy in the village. He's like the head of the village, but he's a creep, and he does this mm-hmm. thing where he, uh, when the when the girls turn 14 in the village, he goes and he takes them from their families. You know what I'm saying? And so everybody in the village is like they're plotting to kill him, so they want Kanemaki to do it because he's the only swordsman there. So this thing happens where you know, blah blah blah. Anyway, I don't want to spoil it. So <laughs> he. Um, but there's an interesting fight there, a good story there, um, and this kind of leads Kojiro to get uh, his sword taken from him because of something that he does. And then um, Kanemaki just does not want to train him. But since he he ends up he beats the guy that's the head of this village this, that that was the creep, so now he's got students now. Now everybody respects him again, and they and they want to learn from him. And he just won't teach Kojiro. So Kojiro is just like watching him, and he won't teach him. And he's like begging him, and he won't teach him. So then what happens is Kojiro starts to attack him all the time, and Kanemaki fights him off. And it's like he didn't want to train him, but he, like, kind of did. Ends up you know what I'm saying? Things, yeah. So then um, so then Kojiro goes off into the world, right? But he goes off into the world with Ido Itasai, the one that I told you was um, kind of kind of the Musashi before Musashi was. And the defining moment for Kojiro is that they end up uh, – there's this group of refugee soldiers that are just hunting down samurai, and – uh, Kojiro's alone and he ends up fighting he just basically fights for like three days straight like no water no food and it's just like non-stop he's being hunted by these guys that was kind of his defining moment and that then sounds awesome it was fire then <clears throat> Musashi his uh his defining moment was a little different like his whole thing is he started off as like this this wild beast <laughs> you know what I'm saying just like this physically gifted like monster mm. and he ends up you know, when he first goes out into the world, he's a knucklehead, man, and he just thinks he's, like, invincible, and he loses. But, like I said, he's a master of learning from his losses, you know what I'm saying? And he's really has this mind where he's able to just, like, think. And, like, one thing Vagabond does is that's amazing is they don't really show – it's not, like, training arcs, so they don't, like, show characters, like, training for real for, like – multiple chapters you know what i'm saying it's usually with musashi it's all up here like mm-hmm. he's just kind of training his mind and he's able to and he's able to like change the, his approach to things by doing that uh but he ends up having this fight with 70 <laughs> samurai I'm sorry how many seven <coughs> zero seventy he ends up fighting 70 samurai from yoshioka clan it's amazing again not gonna spoil it um but that was kind of his defining moment right so that's my three favorite characters in a in a quick little little nutshell summary there. Strong. Um, again, I'll talk about um, my three favorite arcs real quick. My number one, uh, well, I'll start at number three. My number three favorite arc is the Wandering arc, right? And it's and again, like I'm an action junkie, bro. But it's kind of weird because my favorite arcs they're not the action ones for real. Okay, that you is interesting. I mean? The Wandering arc is so this this is my number three. It's my third favorite arc. This arc comes. After the fight with the 70 Samurai. So now he's at this point where he's reached his goal. His goal throughout the whole manga is becoming invincible under the sun. All he cares about is being that number one, uh, you know, the number one undisputed best swordsman. 
he wants the name, he wants the reputation, he wants to be strong. That's all he cares about. He's been in pursuit of this title of being invincible under the sun for the entire manga. Now he has this fight against 70 samurai. Now he's un no unquestionably he's untouchable. He's he's it. He did it. But like that's it. You know what I mean? Like now you start this is where this is the arc where his character really, really, really starts to change and he starts to really think about like if his life if he was like what he was doing was wrong. Like is he wrong for killing all these people all this time? Is he who like you know what I mean? Now he's starting to kind of notice like, well, I just killed this guy, but that guy might have had a wife or a kid or a brother or uh, he's probably somebody's kid or you know what I'm saying? And now he's starting to realize that these lives that he's always taking are, they, they matter. You know what I mean? Like they had a life outside of being a swordsman. Like he doesn't, but you know, these other guys, they, some of them do. Um, so, and then it's just like, it's so good. Cause now this is him like dealing. He's not a hundred percent. He got his, he got a really bad cut on his leg in this fight and it, kind of crippled him a little bit so now he can barely walk um and it's just him now it's him not trying to be the best but now knowing that he's the best right and now he's reached this point where it's like is it about is it about like fighting and winning all the time or is it about being so good that now you don't you don't feel like you have to fight like you feel like it's beneath you you know what i'm saying so now he's doing this thing where he's like he draws a circle because he can't move very well he draws a circle and he just says look <laughs> I don't want to fight because now everybody knows who he is or so everybody, everybody wants to kill him now. Mm. And he, he draws a circle and he's just like, look, I don't want to fight. Don't enter the circle and I, I won't hurt you. You know what I'm saying? I won't even attack if you don't enter the circle. Of course, everybody wants to enter the circle. <laughs> and he, and he kills him. Um, but this is, again, this is the start of like that really good character development for him, of him not trying to be the best but becoming the best now and then kind of reflecting on everything that he's done. And he's just like, become super wise and he's just it's really good My second favorite arc is the arc about kojiro i already kind of talked about that it's just he gets an entire arc straight uh -huh. to himself his whole story from when he's a baby to when he's a grown-up uh it's it's really good man i already kind of talked about it so i'm not gonna spend too much time on it but definitely my favorite has my favorite panel in the entire manga in it and it's uh it's just kojiro standing on this rock just looking out towards the ocean and it's just this is a huge just metaphor for what he is in general. You know what I mean? He's he's water, and that's that's what you know what I mean. That's what this show. But my number one favorite arc in all of Vagabond is the farming arc. This arc is farming so arc. farming arc. This arc, okay. is, <laughs> this arc is so good. It's again, it's it's not about the action in in this one. This is like him. Now this is the arc that comes after the wandering arc because now he's already got the name. He's the he's the best. He's got this injury he's dealing with, and he basically just kind of stumbles upon this little boy, and he notices the kid's father's like in the house dead, so he helps the boy bury his dad, and then he's like, uh, the kid is like eating bugs. He's like cooking oh, bugs shit. and eating them because he doesn't have any food. So he's like, oh, you know, I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna cultivate this land for you so you can farm and you know and get some food or whatever. But then this land is like kind of cursed because the the way that the soil is when it rains it just floods it just floods it so this whole arc is about musashi like learning how to farm and like trying to and like trying to do something for other people for once you know what mm. i'm saying and like is this late or early this is late this is late this is like the last arc of the manga okay so he's learning how to farm and he's like really trying to learn how to do something for somebody else and and this arc you just see this is where all his character development happens man this is where he like like he's he starts to realize like uh this is where he really really starts to realize that it's about being like water you know what i mean and this is about uh like because he's like out there literally trying to fight the water <laughs> you know what i'm yeah. saying like and um but it's it's good man it's like this he just really gives everything to this like to do this for these people like he almost dies of starvation because he just wants to help them so much you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's i'm not gonna get too much in detail because i don't want to spoil it but again this is like where all the character development happens this is my favorite arc. It's it's amazing, um, but uh, but yeah, man. Then real quick, uh, my favorite quotes from from Vagabond. Uh, number three uh, is going to be swimming in the middle of the ocean. One can never realize how vast it truly is, and this is what um, he learns from one of his older because he never had a master, right? But he's met he meets this monk and he meets this swordsman, uh, uh, 
Yagi Sekishusai and then the monk is uh, Ine. And they basically, they their consciousness is stay in his head and he's always learning from them throughout the story. Mm. And this is this quote just means like, the reason that you you can't, you don't realize everything that's going on because you're like in it too much. You know what I'm saying? Like you're in the you're in the stuff, so you can't. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're too deep in the stuff, so you can't really like analyze what's going on because you're too deep in the stuff. You know what I mean? So I really love that one. Uh, my second favorite quote, man. Uh, I posted this one on the Discord before. Preoccupied with a single leaf, you'll miss a tree. Preoccupied with a single tree, you'll miss the entire forest. Um, wow. Again, this is another good one from this monk uh, named uh, Takuan that he meets. And, again, it's facts, man. Tunnel vision, you know what I mean? Tunnel vision is – is uh, it could it could lead you down a really dark path, and that's kind of what happens to him, you know, until he figures things out. That's so true in, like, everything. Yeah, and all aspects of life. My favorite quote, though, man, from this, my number one favorite quote, and this is – again, this is – um, in the farming arc where he really starts to realize that it's about being more like water, you know, and it's not about like being the best. It's not about like trying to win all the time. And it's not about like, uh, you know, he even says something like he talks about Kojiro in this arc too. He's like, you know, I want to know, I knew, I know a man who's like this water, you know, and he's basically like, if I fight him, I'll lose because of how I am, you know what I mean? And basically this part happens where I told you, he's like literally trying to fight the water. You know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> like, and he's like, um, to win against water, I said, water doesn't even look this way. It's so easily held, easily mocked, and yet it is perfect as it is, free as it is. And it's basically just like, I'm sitting up here, like, giving the water all my attention and, like, getting pissed off, and it just don't care. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it doesn't even look, doesn't look my way, you know? So, love that one, too. Uh, but, again, man, it's my favorite manga. You guys definitely, definitely, definitely should read it. Uh, I think it's amazing. It's a masterpiece. Very philosophical. Some great life lessons in there. Great characters. Great arcs. Incredible art. The panels are ridiculous. Yeah, the art is um, awesome. Uh, but yeah, you guys got to read it, man. Those are my favorite arcs. Some of my favorite quotes. Um, it's my favorite characters. Uh, read it, man. Vagabond. Maybe one day. I love this so much that like I'm thinking about doing a YouTube video on my channel. Uh, separate from the pod where i'm just where i just talk about it and just like break it down like for a long time you know and like <laughs> speed through it but nice uh but yeah man boom some back stuff. Right. but one more thing before we get into our top 10 i've got some comic book questions for you sir oh uh, all right are you ready yes all right let's go whoops all right here we go greatest comic book series of all time um, I would say Claremont's X Men Run. Ooh, like it. Favorite comic book series of all time. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> That's what we always do, uh, right? Um, that one is definitely one of my favorites. Um, you know what? Maybe Prisoner of the Moment, but. Uh, X Dawn of X Hickman's Hickman's Dawn of X Swords of X or sorry uh, Dawn of X um, Powers of X Fantastic it's alright no 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 House of X Powers of X Fantastic oh. uh, favorite comic character uh, I, I feel like this is a bit of a spoiler no? it is yeah let's skip that one okay favorite comic group or team oh you know All that right, one come on X-Men no question <laughs> Favorite writer? Hickman. Hickman. That's a good one, too. Most underrated comic book series? Um. Oh, here's a good one. The original Spawn run. Bruh, Spawn. Very good. In the 90s. Very good. In the early 90s. 90s Spawn comics. The figures. I had a Spawn figure when I was a kid. The cape was like, bro, the toy was like this big. The yeah. cape was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know the, I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. But them, um, Mc, Todd McFarlane joints. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's fire. Um, most overrated comic series? Um, Probably the Fantastic Four. Uh, I don't, mm. I mean, I can't really, speci- I haven't liked a lot of their stuff. Right. Um, or. Uh, I didn't really love Ultimate Avengers that much. 
I thought I liked the yeah. Ultimate. I like Ultimate X Men. I like Ultimate uh, Spider Man. Obviously, was fantastic introducing Miles Morales, but I didn't really like Ultimate Avengers. Avengers. That's when you got the weird. That's when you introduced the weird Thor. Yeah. Um, I didn't like Iron Man's suit. It was super weird. It wasn't yeah, my there was favorite. some weird stuff about the Ultimates. Yeah. Um, favorite comic book show. Uh, so obviously it's I'm gonna pick something other than the X Men. <laughs> uh, right, I mean, come on, that's that's my answer. But uh, another one, um, outside of the whole '90s Marvel universe, um, hmm, 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 hmm. Uh, I was gonna say What If. I I really I, I really like that a lot. Um, but let me try to think of another. Oh, here's here, bro. Here's a fucking super deep cut, bro. <laughs> um, the raspberry. So two super deep cuts. One Eon Flux. There bro, Eon Eon's Flux was fire. Super cold, bro. And also on MTV, the Max. Remember the I remember Max? the yeah. animation style on those shows. Yeah. Was, was fire. Crazy. Super fire. Very very nineties. Yep. <laughs> and last but not least, favorite comic book movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so I've answered versions of this question before where we had the whether it be Logan or some the Batman or the Dark Knight. Um so all of those are up there. I would say so I'm going to reinterpret that question. Best movie that had a comic book arc that was like that was done the best on screen. Mm. Um I would say I mean, this is a this is an easy layup, but like the Infinity War, double, yeah. you know, Infinity War and Endgame, they did as good a job as any making that that story come true because they combined both of them. They combined Infinity, Infinity as well yeah. as the original Infinity, Infinity Gauntlet, Gauntlet story. story back in the day. They sure did. It was dope. Yeah. All right, man. Boom. Let's go. Let's get it. It's time for another. Swordcast definitive top 10 list. Oh. This time we're bringing you the Swordcast definitive right. top 10 favorite comic book characters. And uh, this time we mean business. And this time. <laughs> <laughs> In a world where comic book characters. Nah, but for real, this was very fun. We got the most lists ever. We Before really? this one, I think the most that we got was the wrestlers. Remember? Mm -hmm. This time, this is the new number one. This is the most lists we've got. I was up tallying these up last night and this morning and today a little bit. I have to say, this is a this is a good top ten. There's some surprises in here. Um Remember, we'll share our personal lists on next week's episode. Mm -hmm. um, one, two, three, four. I had four. I had four of mine make the list, so I'm happy about that. Um, but, yeah, man, got a lot of lists from people. Shout out to everybody in the Discord community. Uh, you send me yours. I got mine. Uh, I got one from my brother. I got one from his girlfriend, Amanda. I got one from uh, – shout out to Mega Ran. The homie Mega Ran sent one. Uh, but yeah, man, let's go. So hold on, I'm I'm not predicting. Oh yeah, you the gotta order, get, you gotta give me some predictions. But, I, but I'm predicting these will show up in the top ten. Um, Wolverine, okay. Black Panther, okay. I feel the strongest about Black Panther. Uh, Magneto, Batman, and Spider Man. Nice. I, I like think, it. I think I feel confident that I'll. I'm gonna I'm gonna I feel confident that I'm gonna go at least three for five. But we'll see. All right, man. Now I'm gonna give you the top. As always, I'm going to give you, first of all, okay, I'm going to give you the top five who had the most votes that didn't make the list. Uh-oh. This is always kind of a shocker, a little bit of heartbreak, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is always, it's, it's shocker plus heartbreak. The top five characters who had the most points but did not make the list. Number five. Cable. Oh, that man. Cable is a good character. Good character. A lot of lot of nineties kids yeah. in here. Getting a little cable got a lot of good votes. Um ah, just didn't make it. Yeah. 
This one's gonna this one another surprising one. Number four, the the fourth person that had the most points for didn't make the list. Spawn. Oh. I would have loved for Spawn to be on this yeah, list. Yeah, man. Fun. I didn't even I actually I don't know if he would have made my top ten, but I didn't think about Spawn. Yeah. He was on he was on a lot of listening to me. Alright, this one's gonna break your heart. Oh fuck. The third most points that didn't make the I list. I think I know who it's gonna be. Magneto. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Y'all trash, bro. Get the fuck out of here. Hey, how y'all not gonna put goddamn, <laughs> the, the honorable ra- right, the rabbi doctor, bro, you know what I'm what saying? The honorable prophet, uh Eric Lincher X. <laughs> Crazy, bro. All right, man. The second most this is the one that surprises me the most. I actually can believe that this person didn't make. This okay. is my biggest surprise. Second most votes that didn't make the list. Second most points. Doctor Doom. Wow. I can't believe it. I I would have he would have been one of the characters for I sure. guaranteed would Doctor Doom is one of the great villains of all time. Nuts. Great sometimes hero, depending on who you're reading. Well, he's always that nigga Doom is always after absolute power, bro. He always. Was, bro. Always. <laughs> There's like a rule in Marvel where like <laughs> in any universe, Doctor Doom, Victor Von Doom will always try to get absolute power. Like yep. no, matter no matter what matter universe what's going on, no matter he's what. gonna try to conquer the universe, bro, no matter what. No matter if he's got hot dog fingers, everything going <laughs> around at once. Right. But this one's going to break your heart even more. No way. The number one most points that didn't make the top ten. Ready to get your heart broke? No, but. Silver Surfer, dog. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I I, I can kind of. Cause he hasn't been relevant in a long time. You yeah, know? but he he was getting some love though. He was on. Okay, I'm glad to hear a that. A bunch of lists. Let's go, man. Let's get it started. This it is time for the Swordcast Definitive Top Ten Comic Book Characters List. Coming in at number ten, Mistress of the Elements. Uh, let's go. <laughs> The Queen Mother herself. Typhoon! <laughs> <laughs> Lightning Storm! <laughs> we got Queen go. Mother Storm coming in at number 10. Boom. We got some 90s babies and 90s kids in here, man. Let's go. Shout out to Storm, one of my favorite characters. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot, a lot there, man. Good. Good 90s uh, X-Men comic books. Best art ever. I don't care. Bro. There's no art better than 90s. Rob Liefeld. Right. He Yo, gonna, body he, suits and face shields. And face man. shields, bro. Sure, yeah. He'll, get you, <laughs> he'll, he'll have a weird body dystopia. <laughs> Captain America titties way out here. Like, sure. Play. It's cool, man. It's the 90s, dog. I, we all like it. Shout out to Storm. Come in number 10. Coming in at number 9. Nine. Nine. <laughs> Nine. There we go. Nine. The strongest Avenger. Hey. The Incredible Hulk coming Strong. in at number nine. Hey, Interesting. Man. Interesting. I love it, though. I love Hulk. Yeah, yeah, me too. I was actually kind of scared that because that it was like the first few lists I had, he wasn't on them. And then the next, like, he got hot. The next, like, 20, <laughs> he, he got, got hot. He got hot in the, in the second half. <laughs> he, a, he, got, he got hot in the second half. Shout out to the Hulk. Um, World Breaker Hulk, Beast, uh, Planet Hulk, one of the best, or World War Hulk, one of the best, best stories in Marvel history. That's one of my favorites, bro. One of my favorites. Too. I love telling people about it. That's Me never too, heard of because it. because they're just like right, and it's just <laughs> there's so many opportunities to like exaggerate. Like, yeah, that and nigga beat, that. right. He pu- hey, bro, he punt he he threw a wo- half Wolverine's body over a mountain. God damn it, he beat the brakes off Colossus. God damn, whoop that nigga's ass. <laughs> and then you know what? And look, that Black Panther. <laughs> it was like you know what? I you don't know know if I want these smoke. This smoke. <laughs> you know what? I be- you said you weren't here for that shit. I believe I you. trust you, bro. I'm a holler. That nigga T'Challa said, bro, you ain't not being a big ass. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck off somewhere with all that shit. Oh, man. Coming in at number eight. I know it's going to make my guy Eric Greenlee happy. Oh. Shout out to Handsome Bane. Nightwing. 
Dick hey, Grayson. Dick Grayson. Gets on the list at number eight. Yeah. He was number one on a few lists, man. It was it was pretty, he, he's, pretty interesting. He's not my favorite DC character, but he's up there. I mean, yeah. imagine like Batman, but like not a sociopath. Yeah, man, for sure. He <laughs> like, is. He's imagine like, Batman with Superman's personality. Yeah, that's what that's what Dick is, man. And he's a dope character. He's one of my favorite DC characters for sure. So dope to see him get on here. Coming in. At number seven, that's right, the crazy man himself, Batman. Boom. You already knew Batman was going to make the list. Yeah. Look, man, I used to love Batman, but I just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. Now, I can't, I can't unlearn that he's rich, and that's kind of the only reason why his character works. Oh, man. You have all the money in the world to effectively uh, fight crime in a non- Violent manner. Yeah. Nah. Nope. I'm going to beat up poor people right. in the rain at night. Yep. No. Um, All right. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in at number six, I will say that this is the most surprising entry for me. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised that this many. I mean, uh, I know people like this character. This is one of my brother's favorite characters, but he was getting. He was on. He was hot. He got a lot of votes, a lot of points, a lot of good position on list two. Number six, Matt Murdock, Daredevil. Interesting. Interesting. Shout out to Daredevil, man. Yeah. Um, street level guy. Street level guy. Really dope character. I love Daredevil, too. Comic books very similar to Ninja Turtles. I think mm-hmm. Ninja Turtles. It's based off of it. Based off of Daredevil, right? Based off of, I mean, specifically the hand. It's yeah, based the, off of elements, like the, yeah, hand, the hand and, and stick. the foot and stick and, and splinter. splinter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and the turtles, you know, at first they had the red uh, face mask and their eyes were white. Mm-hmm. Um, very similar very to. Very similar to Daredevil. Daredevil's man. originally design, original design. Yeah, I Dare- kind of like the retro black and red Me too. Daredevil design. That was kind of yeah. cool. I li- I used to like the yellow and red yeah, one too. Yeah. The oh, yeah. The red over mm-hmm. it. And the red eyes, mm-hmm. yeah, it was sweet. Uh, man, yeah, Daredevil's a really dope character, so it's kind of it's fire to see him on here. I'm I'm interested to see what happens with him next. Um, if he's gonna do, yeah. what they're gonna do. I mean, it's live action wise. They're they're doing a Marvel TV show with him. That's dope. Uh, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that. Coming in, uh, we're, now we're getting into this. Now we're getting into this top five. Coming in at number five. This might be my favorite entry on the list. I'm glad this person made the top five. Miles Morales, Spider Man. Let's go, dog. Let's I know go. he was on my list. So do I wonder? I'm gonna give myself credit eventually, but I'm gonna wait to see if if there's another Spider Man that shows up. Okay. Um, but I'm I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna count this, bro. All right, I just need one, bro. I wanna. I think I might think. I think I'm gonna go four for four for five. Let's see. Let's see. Shout or else out. I'm gonna be really disappointed in y'all. <laughs> Shout out to Miles coming in at number five. Uh he was on this is the first this is the first one that's in this top ten that, that was on my list. So shout out to Miles. Boom. Coming in at number four. Oh man, let's go. My favorite Marvel character makes the list. Mm-hmm. That's my boy, Wade Wilson, Deadpool. Um look, man, I'm not a huge fan of what the characters become. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Just but a joke. Just a joke, but I mean, man, '90s Deadpool, such a sweet character, man. You want to talk about like that first run? Um, do you want to talk about uh, X Force Deadpool? You want to talk about um, New Mutants? Like back in the '90s, like he was such a cool character, cool looking character, uh, really dope. And then you know, now as of late, they've kind of just like taken the whole funny side of him and just blown it completely out of proportion. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one of my favorite comic book characters ever. Coming in at number three, we got another spider on the list. Oh, hey. Peter Parker, Spider-Man, makes the list at number three. Shout out to Peter. I mean, I look, man. I don't know about better than Miles, but I don't I think it. he's better than Miles, but, I mean, he is the classic he's one the OG. that everybody knows. He's the OG. And, I, and, look, man, Peter Parker's a dope character. I love yeah. Peter. Yeah. Um, not as much as Miles, but I do love Peter. Yeah. Um, but coming in, time for the top two. Okay. Coming in at number two, the king of Wakanda. Let's go. <laughs> T'Challa. Let's go. Black Panther. Coming in at number two, second most points. I, I will say this as well. I didn't say this. This is the closest t- 
top two that we've ever had. It's really? usually like you know how we do this, and it's always said that the number one's like literally a blowout every yeah. time. This is the closest one that we've ever had. Okay, very All right. close. So I've gone, I've gone three for five. I've hit my, I hit, hit my quota. But Hold I'm on, s- I'm gonna, I'm gonna count. Hold on. Three, two, one. Bruh, four point difference between wow. the, the top two, four points. <laughs> so there's a really big name that I haven't heard yet, and I also didn't hear it on the missed the cut list. So I'm, I'm, war- I, so either I'm about to be right and this will be my <laughs> best showing yet, or I'm gonna be really mad at y'all niggas. <laughs> one or the other. So let's. What do we got? Coming in at number one. I'm the best at what I do. Let's fucking go, dog. <laughs> and what I do ain't very nice. <laughs> what I do ain't pretty. Let's fucking go, Let's dog. Let's go. Wolverine. Yes. Logan. What you want? Samurai. Soldier. Bro. Uh, <laughs> fucking spy, spy. Secret agent. Secret assassin. agent. Black ops. Assassin. Bro. Wolverine. Is there man. a team that he hasn't been? Bro, Wolverine's been an X-Man. X Factor, Avengers. I think he was on a Fantastic Four for a minute. X Force. X Force, right? And shout out to Wolverine. Yeah, bro. I'm not. I'm happy. I'm not mad at this number one at all, man. Look, not at all. This is one of the most defining characters from my childhood in no the question. '90s comics period. Um, one of the just man, one of the dopest looking characters. Always, always, always. His comic books, man, are they were so good. Um. And just a character with some of the – he's so fun to write about because he's, like, he's awesome, for yeah. one. He's got a cool power. He's not super overpowered, so yeah. he can you can, like, show him being hurt Beat. and having yeah. to overcome stuff. And he's also – he's so flawed, bro. Like, he's got so much shit going on with bro, him. Bro, he's got a – he got kids all that over. All, that hate him. That hate him. <laughs> he's got – He's had relationships with with women that yeah, hate him, bro. Every he's, yeah, you know what I'm saying. He's had relationships with women that died. That was his fault. He's yep. lived so many lifetimes. Like this dude is, he's straight up a just as much as he's had an entire life's worth of events in America. He's had the same in Japan, and he's had yep. the same in Canada and, and England. In England, like yep. Weapon X, like this. This is a great character, uh, Eric. Don't you say it. <laughs> Don't you say it. I'm talking to you, <laughs> Mr. Handsome Bane. Yahoo! No. Don't you say it. He always no, calls Wolverine no, Mario no. with claws. Jesus Christ. No. He's, he's yelling it into his computer no right now. No Wolverine slander. Shout out to Stop. Wolverine. Get out of here. Move. <laughs> Move, Eric. Move. Coming in at number one. I'm happy with this list. Me too. Number 10, Storm. Number nine, The Hulk. Number eight, Nightwing. Number seven, Batman. Number six, Daredevil. Number five, Miles Morales. Number four, Deadpool. Number three, Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Number two, T'Challa. Black Panther. And number one, Wolverine. Let's go. I like it. Chicken Garage. Berserker <laughs> <laughs> Barrage. Right. Shout, call back to the very first episode very of the Sword Very first Cat. episode, Chicken Garage. Boy. Drill claw, drill claw. <laughs> hey, bro. Tornado claw. <laughs> the new He's sp- so fast, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> just like, just fucking like pulsating with like hyper feral energy. Like, I want to. I'm a berserker rage. I'm gonna shred the person in front of me to ribbons, bro. Like uh, nothing. Wolverine. Fire. Good job, guys. I'm not disappointed. Right. You guys did good. I was nervous for a while, bro. <laughs> you guys did good. All right, man. Episode 118 in the books. I got to hurry up and go pick up my kids from school. Boom. Shout out to y'all for listening to episode 118. We'll be back next week with 119. Hey, man. We're going to talk about next week. We're going to talk about our favorite Samurai Shampoo episodes. We are upon the 18-year anniversary Ooh. of Samurai <laughs> Shampoo. Everybody in the Discord, I want you guys to send us your favorite episodes and we're gonna try to come up with a list of like the five best episodes of Samurai Shampoo oh this so. gives me an excuse to binge watch the whole series again yes sir can't wait alright man thank y'all for listening peace